It's time for Story Corner again, and apologies if there's any excess noise because I'm having to record this while rush hour in Edinburgh happens right outside my window. This is a story from the Shetland Isles, by some creatures that are rarely, if ever, found elsewhere in Scotland. There was once a woman called Mally. She lived with her husband and her two wee bairns. Her husband was only really there for half the year though. Every summer he would head off to sea and work on the ships and he returned at the start of winter with enough money to fill her chest with flour and a barrel full of salted herring. Now, she, Mally did a wee bit of work on the side, but generally that was enough to do her and the kids throughout the year. And then one winter, Mally's husband didn't come home. She waited and she waited, but news eventually came that the ship had gone down and with it, all the money they needed to fill their bellies. Mally, where else she went, she looked in the chest and it was empty, apart from a few spider's webs. So she peeked into the barrel. It's just some salty water, water and a few scales at the bottom. There was no other option. She was going to have to go and beg for the charity of her neighbours. There weren't very many houses within easy walking distance and you know, most people had very little to spare anyway. But Mally and her oldest son, they went up a wee hill to the cottage of an old woman who they knew she'd always done very well for herself. And when she opened the door and Mally explained that her husband had been lost at sea, she didn't have any money to feed her two wee bairns, and her son all the while was peering through the door and having a wee nosy. And you could see the pantry door was open at the back. Well, inside there was there was bread and ham and cheese and her jars full of jam and he was in danger of creating a puddle on the doorstep with how much he was just drooling at the sight. But the wee old lady, she said, Oh no, I'm just a, just a poor old woman. I can barely afford to feed myself, never mind beggars like you. With that, she just shut the door in her face. Well, that wee boy, he was close to tears. Mum, did you see all the food that she had back there? Why? Why would she not want to help us? Well, Mally replied, that's just how some people are, lad. You know, not everybody wants to share what they have. But remember, that's not our way. We are better than that. We'll always help anybody in need. So they trudged on home and they got set for another hungry evening. And, you know, things were dark and it gets dark very early in the Shetland winter. Mally heard a knock at the door. It was a bit odd. She didn't have very many neighbours, but you know what? Maybe the old woman had changed her mind, so she ran over, she opened the door, and there was just a strange looking wee man in front of her. Oh, I'm very sorry to bother you, he said. I've been walking all day, and I was just wondering if you maybe had just a wee bite to eat. Well, I sighed. I, I wish I could help you, but honestly, we've got nothing to eat ourselves. I'm, I'm so sorry, but. You know, maybe you have better luck if you just carried on down the road a wee bit further. Oh, I couldn't go another step. My feet are worn out. Any chance I could just kip here for the night? Of course, of course, in you come. Get yourself warmed up by the fire there. That's what, that's one thing we can do. Well, the wee man, he settled in that chair by the fire and he took in the room around him. And he spied couple of hungry faces, a couple of pair of eyes just watching from a box bed in the corner. Come on now, said the visitor. You must have something to eat here, surely. Well, Mally, she had her suspicions as to who the guest really was, and she didn't want to disappoint a trout. So she went to double check. Opening the chest, she, she got a wee knife out. She scraped off any wee crusty bits that she could find. It was caked in the corners, but in reality, I mean, the pile she made, it was mostly dust and spider webs. Then she took a wee bit of the salty, scaly water from the fish barrel. She mixed it all together and made a kind of pasty gruel. Well, four bowls were handed out, and Mally and the bairns, they slurped this stuff down like it was Michelin-star dining. 
The wee man on the other hand, he just... What exactly is this meal? Well, Molly says, it's the only thing we've had for two days. You're very welcome to it. And so, you know, not wanting to be rude, the wee man, well, he forced it down his throat. When it was time for bed, Molly told the man, look, the one thing we do have is plenty of peat for burning. So you just keep that fire going strong, have yourself a good night's sleep, okay? In the morning, Mally found the wee man, all ready to leave. As he opened the door to walk out, he said, Mally, it takes a special kind of person to share the only food that they have in the world with a complete stranger. For that, I give you my blessing. Well, she wasn't sure that this was a trow before, then it was pretty clear now. Pleased with her good deed, but very aware that blessings don't fill bellies, Mally was wondering what she was going to do today to fix her problem. The basket of peat was getting low, so she filled it up from the outside store, set to work getting the fire going. But first things first, she needs small bits, otherwise she'd just smother the wee flame. So Mally picks up a chunk of peat and snaps it in half. Ting! Something fell out. Well, what were the chances? It was a gold coin. Well, Mally, she picks up another bit of peat and ting! Another coin. Every piece she broke, there was a coin hiding inside. She calls her son over, hands him the money. So run to the store with that basket, bring back, I don't, I don't know, bread and cheese and uh, some meat, bacon, definitely bacon. Uh, we could definitely we could do some veg and you know, maybe you've got fruit and just anything you want. Just get anything. Well, Mally and her kids, they'd never eaten so well. She gave a little prayer of thanks to the trout. The old lady up the hill, she wasn't so happy though. I mean, days ago, Mally was at her door begging, and now she's got gold coins practically coming out of her ears. She was going to find out where this cash was coming from. That night she crept outside Mally's window, and inside she saw one gold coin after another popping out of the chunks of peat. Ha <laughs> ha! That's a trick, is it? Must have stashed all that gold away so nobody would find it and everybody would take pity on her. I deserve some of that gold just as much as she does. So throughout the dead of night, a little old lady, she filled a car full of all the peat from Mally's shed. She brought it back to her own cottage. And there she had a big grin on her face as she broke a chunk in half and then squeak! That wasn't a coin. That was a mouse that fell out. Okay, that one must have been a duff. Right, next piece. Squeak! That's, that's quite strange. The old woman, she kept breaking pieces of peat and the mice just kept popping out until she wasn't even thinking anymore. She was just furiously ripping it chunks. She took a breath and she looked up and oh, oh, oh no. She'd created an army of mice. Almost in unison, they all turned and looked towards the pantry. No, 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 no. Ah, there was nothing she could do. Hundreds of mice, they swarmed over her food. They didn't stop until every last crumb was gone. And then it was her turn. She had to pick up her wee basket. She had to go begging. Well, when she arrived at Mally's door, it was the wee boy that answered. Please, said the wee old lady. I've had a terrible mouse infestation. They've eaten all of my food. Could you spare anything just for a wee old woman? The boy looked at her dead in the eye and said, How about I give you exactly what you gave us? Nothing. But before he could close the door, Mally was behind him. What did I tell you, son? We're not like that. No matter who it is, we will always share with those in need. She invited the old woman in and told her, Take whatever you can carry. If you need any more when you're finished, you only have to ask. Just remember, as long as I'm alive, you and anybody else here won't go hungry. Slanchet.